share with you three of the many stars that I follow and ask a little question. Sevang Rigzin studied journalism and became the education minister of the Ladakh Hill Council Lay at the age of 27. Stanzin is a filmmaker today and has been winning awards at film festivals across India, France and Canada. Tinless is a celebrated entrepreneur, featured in many national and international journals and one of them has declared her the person of the year. Can you guess what could be common among these stars? No, they were not top scorers from an elite school. In fact, they were failures that failed miserably and repeatedly at school. Yet, they achieved these feats. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, the absurdity that we see is some of our colleges demand 100% marks to get an admission. Nothing less would do. Makes one wonder, why are students with 95% marks made to feel like failures? <laughs> Let me take you to Ladakh to see some of our experiments in education. A little bit about Ladakh. A mountain desert at 11,000 feet in the rain shadow of the Himalayas, nature has left us, well, high and dry. Climatically, linguistically, culturally, we are a microscopic minority in India and therefore face a lot of problems, especially in education. I came face to face with the reality, or rather the falseness of the education system, almost accidentally, while tutoring 10th grade students to finance my own engineering studies. In those days, 95% of the students were failing in the 10th grade board exams. I was convinced at this rate, it could only be the system that is failing and not the students. I decided I was going to go back to Ladakh and work to change this system. Together with like-minded friends, we set up the Students' Educational and Cultural Movement of Ladakh, SECMOL. We worked with the government to bring reforms in the government schools. And within seven years, the pass percentage went from 5 to 55 percent. Today, thank you. Today it stands at around 75 percent. But we didn't want to miss out those who still failed in the exams. And for them, we set up a special residential school, an unusual one, on the banks of Indus in Ladakh. Here, the admission criteria is not your grades or percentage, but that you have failed in the conventional school system. while those who have passed may be considered, but on the waiting list for a change. A typical student arrives at this campus as a lost and confused soul in one of our two weeks youth camps that are led by the seniors at the campus. These camps are held just after the board exams and before the results are declared. And in these camps, they are helped to explore themselves and the world around and understand failure and prepare for failure because it's not them that are failing. And when the results do come out, more than half of them fail, but they are better able to cope with it and see it, in fact, as an opportunity to come to the alternative school. At this alternative school, they have a mix of uh, counseling, introspection, and experiential learning to learn the academic subjects and the life skills that they miss out at school. For example, the campus runs like a little country with its own little elected government that changes every two months. 
it has its own newspaper, the Campus Times, the Campus Radio, and even a separate time zone, one hour ahead of the Indian Standard Time. It's the easiest way to make teenagers go to bed early and get up <laughs> with the sunrise. <laughs> the leader of their elected government may give them portfolios or responsibilities, for example, of management of the animals, the solar cooking devices, gardens and food production, electricity supply, accounts, and so on. They plan, they set goals, execute, and report in the big bi-monthly parliament and learn the life skills that way. Abstract concepts are brought to life through experiments using in life. For example, when they learn the germ theory, they make use of it in fruit preservation in a big jam making festival to make hundreds of bottles of uh, apricot jam and then uh, they label it, pack it, advertise and sell it in the market. You could say their lessons in economics and commerce and with the profits the whole school goes on tour to the plains of India by learning geography on the way. And when they are back, they report it in the Campus Times, talk about it on the campus radio, and with such experiences, by the end of the year, they are so mature that they are ready to lead and mentor in the next youth camp where another batch of lost and confused souls come. Teenagers who are uh, infamous around the world for how they are, it's unfair to them. You see that they can be our partners in running the system if they are given responsibilities, respect, and challenges to channelize their energy rather than a long list of rules and disciplines to follow. Like these uh, innovations in education, innovations in general are a part of life at this campus. Innovations in science have revolved around the themes of earth, sun, ice and fire. Now earth or mud, that is the cheapest material right under our feet, we have built the whole campus using nothing but mud, no cement. And sun, the cheapest source of energy right above our head is the source of power for heating these buildings. Passive solar heated buildings that requires no other fossil fuel keep these buildings at plus 15 degrees when outside it is minus 15. <clears throat> the sun is also used for all purposes. This campus is off-grid for cooking for vegetables in winter in the solar greenhouses, for natural lighting, electricity, water heating, water pumping. Even the cows on the campus live in solar heated cow sheds. Ice can be a lot of fun and use also. The fun part first. This campus invented make it anywhere technique of ice hockey rings and built what would probably be the largest ice hockey rink in India and produced women's ice hockey champions at the national level. Ice can also be a savior for the Himalayan villages reeling under climate change and uh, fast melting glaciers. Our latest invention has been ice stupa artificial glacier. Together with my students, we first built the prototype of this glacier, very simple technology where water that goes waste into the Indus and the ocean in winter when nobody needs it is piped away and downstream and where a big fountain gushes out just because of the gravity, no moving parts, no machines and freezes as it falls down in minus 20 to minus 30 and makes a cone or a mountain of ice. The geometric shape is such that it melts 
in late spring when farmers need water the most. It has been widely covered in international journals and you can look up. Basically what we are doing at this campus is to replace the conventional three R's approach to education, reading, writing, arithmetic, all to do with only the head, with a more holistic three H's, head, hands and heart. Without skilled hands, education is practically useless. Without a kind heart, it can even be dangerous. So my message is that in an unfortunate environment, even stars are made discarded as failures. But in a supportive environment, even so-called failures can shine like bright stars. Thank you very much. Thank you.